going on, everyone? Welcome into Chatterbox Bearcats. I think I know what's going on. I think your Saturday is probably off to a horrible start if you like the UC Bearcats because the team absolutely stinks right now. The weather is putrid, but the night is young, folks, and that is why I'm filming this with about four minutes left in the contest. I don't even care what the final score is. All I know is Cincinnati gets blasted by Iowa State. The Bearcats are now 0-3 in the Big 12. They're maiden voyage in this Power conference that Cats fans have been waiting for for forever. And three games in, I'm saying, can we please go back to the AAC? I've had enough. Had enough of this stuff. I'm not going to keep you for long because, quite frankly, I have a life. I want to spend my Saturday doing something aside from talking about a terrible football team because that's what this team is right now. Cincinnati Bearcats are not good. And the Satterfield area is more like the, not the SATT, it's the SAD. Satterfield era. Iowa State comes in a Nippert Stadium. Mind you, an Iowa State Cyclones team that lost to the Ohio Bobcats. So all of a sudden, the Cincinnati Bearcats have been a power for years, are dealing with teams that are losing to MAC teams. We're losing to MAC teams ourselves and the Miami Red Hawks. It's, it's ugly. It's ugly, folks. I'm pissed off. I'm not happy about it whatsoever. Let's run through the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good news, those red uniforms and the black pants, it's sharp. Bearcats have some style, at least. They get the style points over the Iowa State Cyclones. That's about it. More good news, Dante Corleone's a stud. I really love his game. He was everywhere, a wrecking ball. Second half, ran out of gas, as did the entire defense. Um, Mateer, he may be the next great UC tight end. Listed at 6'5", 248 pounds. And unless someone scores in the last four minutes of this game, Mateo was the only Bearcat to reach the end zone. He looks really good. Kelsey, Josh Wiley. Could Mateo be next at tight end U? Yes, we're calling it that now. Not the Iowa Hawkeyes. It's the Cincinnati Bearcats. And the last good news, Emory Jones can run it. Can't throw it. So fortunately, he at least has some wheels and can make some explosive plays on offense. But that's that. That's the good news. Let's get to the bad UC is now, uh, I think they're the worst Big 12 team. UCF is another team that's winless in the Big 12 right now. In fact, every team that came from the AAC to the Big 12 right now is pretty bad. They are all cellar dwellers at this point. Um, and, and even BYU, we, we don't know what to expect of them, but their only Big 12 win is over Cincinnati. So we will see. That's the bad. The ugly, I'm really questioning the Scott Satterfield hire. I know. Two weeks ago, and if, if this was a normal day where I had some time and wanted to put some effort into this show, I'd probably go into producer mode and find me saying after the Pittsburgh game, I've proclaimed it. I've seen enough. This is a, this is a bowl-bound team. I take that back. Look, I make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. I said the Bearcats were going to cover five points in this game. Seriously? Why did I do that to myself? Not only did I have to witness that garbage that I just witnessed on the field with the rain pouring down, I also lost some money in the process. So that's the ugly three games into Big 12 play, and I'm questioning Scott Satterfield. I'm wondering about this hire. When, when you're running a draw play with 15 seconds left in the first half at midfield, a designed quarterback draw, what the hell are you doing? Louisville fans have been talking about it the entire offseason. Like, get ready for Scott. Scott's great. Wait till he starts running draws on third and six. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing why Louisville fans didn't love him. And I'm really starting to question this hire for the Bearcats. Um, more of the ugly, Emory Jones. Why is he still out there? Why did he play the entirety of this game? I said the same thing against BYU. But I said, coaches must know better than me. The Bradys may not be better than, than Emory Jones, and it could get ugly if they throw one of the Bradys out there. Give me a break. It can't get any worse than this. I hate ragging on a on a college kid because he's not getting paid. Wait, now kids are getting paid with NIL. I could say whatever the hell I damn please. Emory Jones stinks. There's a reason why he left Florida. There's a reason why he got benched at Arizona State. The fact that the Bearcats go into their inaugural Big 12 season and Scott Satterfield thinks the best option is to run Emory Jones out there, that's a fireable offense. I mean, he can't throw the football. The only explosive play that he had a chance to make all day, aside from penalties helping out his cause, was that wide-open D. Wiggins on the first drive of the game. 
He missed him by 15 feet. He missed him by 15 feet. I mean, it's ugly right now. And look, Emory Jones, I'm sure he's a great guy. I hope he's getting a good education at Cincinnati because he can't play football. It's as simple as that. And you're saying, oh, you're going to rag on a college kid. You couldn't do any better. You're right. I suck at football. I didn't make it past the freshman team. So I'm sitting here in an armchair and being an armchair coach. With that being said, it's time to find a new quarterback. Whether it's Dragish or Lichtenberg, I don't care. It's got to be one of the two. Emory Jones is not your future. Everyone knows this. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a fifth-year senior. He's not coming back next year. This is it for Emory Jones. You're two and four now. You're teetering to not even making a bowl game. Forget the Idaho Potato Bowl. Forget the Cheese It Bowl. You're probably not making a bowl game at this point. It's time to start building the future. And Emory Jones is not the future. It's as simple as that. Threw for less than 100 yards in this game. Um, the, the Bearcats barely tally over 200 yards. Threw some awful interceptions deep in the Bearcats territory that gave Iowa State some points. Just wasn't good. It's as simple as that. He's an athlete. He's good with his legs. Maybe they should put him uh, in the offseason. They should have thought about this. They should have put him on that trajectory of being a wide receiver like Evan Prater because it probably would have been his best been his best option here. How you go the entire offseason and think that that's your best option going into the Big 12. I mean, surely there is someone out there in collegiate football that would have came to Cincinnati, a team that had just made the playoffs two years ago, to be a starting quarterback in the Big 12. Whether he's a graduate transfer, whether he's a sophomore, junior, I don't care. They go with Emory Jones, who I'm sure Scott Satterfield was like, oh, you know, I loved Malik Cunningham at Louisville. I love that experiment. I'm going to go for the same type of quarterback at Cincinnati, dynamic, someone that has a lot of intangibles and I can coach him. Because look, Emory Jones is talent. He's got a good arm. I mean, he was overthrowing receivers left and right. He's got some zip on his passes. But there's a thing called accuracy. He doesn't have it. And he's not going to figure it out at this stage in his career. I would love nothing more than to not see Emory Jones out there next week. If he's out there next week, I probably won't be watching. I, I have to watch because I have to do these postgame shows. But aside from that, um, it, it, it's not good, to say the least. I mean, th think about how the Desmond Ritter era started. It was Hayden Moore that was starting against UCLA in California. He had like one fumble and maybe an interception. He had one bad half. And they pulled him and they threw in Desmond Ritter and the rest is history. Ritter becomes the best quarterback in Bearcats history. Why don't you do the same thing with Emory Jones right here? Bench him and try one of the Bradys. I don't care which one. One of the Brady Bunch. Give me one. Cincinnati took the lead early. They went up 7-3 after a Mateo touchdown again. Like Mateo is a very bright spot in a season that has otherwise been filled with darkness. Um, Bearcats have scored one touchdown at home in the last how many quarters at this point? Like 10 quarters of play. Uh, if you went to Nippert Stadium and you trudged through the rain and walked down campus to get to this game and spent three hours, two hours, whatever it may be, probably an hour and a half to two hours because there, it didn't seem like there were a lot of people that stayed for a lot of the second half. But if you did dedicate some of your day to watching this football game, kudos to you. You're one of the real ones. I hope that I'm one of the real ones. That's why I'm talking about this right now, giving you a spaced event. Hop in the comments and, and tell me why I should be a little less harsh on this team and a little less harsh on our head football coach that a lot of people weren't happy about the Satterfield hire in the first place. I was the one that said, give him a chance, did great things at Appalachian State, turned Louisville around at least a little bit from day one. He inherited a mess. Give Satterfield a chance. Just the fact that he's throwing Emory Jones out there every single drive when everyone in the stands is saying, please, Give us one of the Bradys, and he's not doing it. That to me is, it's easy to be an armchair coach. Listen, but to me, that's a fireable offense. Um, so we'll see how many years Satterfield lasts in football. I'm just excited for the West Miller era. Now's a good time to tell you to, to download and subscribe to the Chatterbox Bearcats audio podcast, wherever you get your audio podcast, whether it may be Spotify or Apple. Because once basketball season starts, it's going to be brighter days. I promise you that. There's going to be good times this basketball season with or without 
Aziz Bandango and Jameel Reynolds, the two big guys that, if you don't know, are going to be really good players for UC and are awaiting waivers from the NCAA, whether they can play this year. Regardless, it'll be better than last year, and hopefully they don't start out 0-3 in the Big 12 like the football team. But that's really all I have. I didn't want to spend too much of your Saturday. I wanted to vent a bit. I just think it's embarrassing. What we saw today is flat-out embarrassing. A couple of years off a, a playoff appearance. The worst part about it, Cincinnati is some of the best high school football in the, in the world. Uh, the state of Ohio as a whole. I mean, going up to Massillon and up to Lakewood St. Ed's and, you know, even, even just if you're looking proximity-wise, going down to, to Trinity and Louisville St. X and Scott County, Great Crossing, all these different great programs across the, uh, across the Midwest. And Cincinnati's smack down in the middle of it with a lot of success to, to, to look back on in the last few years to, to point to recruits and say, hey, we've made a playoff. Why don't you come here and be our quarterback and lead us into the Big 12 era? And they go with Emory Jones. And how's that worked out? Not good, to, to say the least. After that Pittsburgh game, I was bought in, said this is a bowl-bound team. This team's not going to a bowl. I just wanted to win one Big 12 game and score more than two touchdowns in one game. Give me some electricity. Let me do some down the drives. But the fact is, Ohio, and specifically Cincinnati, has amazing high school talent. Iowa, you kidding me? You're losing to Iowa State. And if you're a Cyclones fan and you're watching this show, you know it. There's not good high school football in Iowa State. There's not a ton of tradition as a member of the Iowa State Cyclones. I mean, sure, you're in the Big 12 and Cincinnati. It's not like they've had a ton of tradition as a football program. But take away Brock Purdy, take away Brees Hall, take away a few other players. Shout out Brock Purdy, superstar, and shout out Cyclones. Um, definitely a football program that's on the rise. But they've been a cellar dweller in the Big 12. They don't have a lot to point to as like, oh, this is, this is a power. And they're coming into Nippert Stadium on homecoming and laughing you off the field. I mean, it's a joke. It's a joke. Do better. And it's easy to say from my chair right here. But, I mean, come on. We as Bearcats fans deserve better than that. We just hit the playoff up a couple of years ago. Didn't score a touchdown in that playoff game. What's new? Welcome in Oklahoma a couple of weeks ago for the Big 12 opener. Don't score a touchdown. And then today, put out whatever that putrid performance was. And all we wanted was to see a new quarterback in there with our own two eyes to see that, all right, Emory Jones is the best we have. And we don't even get to see it. What are you doing, Scott? That's a direct shout out to you. What are you doing, Scott? This is Chatterbox Bearcats. I'm your host, Chuck Walter. And you can have good times right now with the Chatter Podcast. It's a comedy show. We talk about Cincinnati sports. We talk about national sports. We get into observational humor. It's sports. It's comedy. We've had on great guests. Dan Horde coming up this week. We've had on Sean Salisbury. Um, we're, we're lining up the guests big time. We're, we're throwing out hitters to everyone trying to get some wonderful guests on we've already had some good ones and uh the show goes on so subscribe to the chatter right now and become a friend of the program chatterbox bearcats chuck walter talk to you soon coming up next the baylor bears at nippert stadium for the love of god can we have it better than this